Good afternoon, good afternoon. I just want to bless God, give God the glory, give God the praise, give God the honor, give God the I want to come and thank you this morning. Shut everything in all thing this morning, this afternoon, I mean. Um, I own no copyright of this music or the song that's playing in the background. I just want to bless God and just give God the glory and just give him the praise, Lord. Whatever that you are at this hour, just join me and just to make sure God thank him for his goodness and his kindness. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just say thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your kindness. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, for breath of life. I thank you, Lord, for new opportunities. I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you, Lord, for everything and all things, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for making way where there seems to be no way. I thank you, Lord, for your protection. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your kindness. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, the Spirit of the living God. Lord, I just say thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to the Almighty God. Um, today we'll be talking about effective planning. Um, effective planning, why effective planning is so vital um, of achieving any kind of success in our life. So today we're going to speak about effective planning because if you don't plan your life, um, somebody else will plan your life for you. And if you don't plan your life, you can never achieve success. So whatever success that you want to achieve today in this world, you have to plan. Winston Churchill once said, he who feels the plan is planning to fail. So if you don't plan for anything, you cannot expect to achieve anything. So today we're going to discuss a few principles, biblical principles, um, how to achieve success, achieve your desired goal that you want to achieve um, by using effective planning. So the word today is, what is planning, right? So planning is the process of thinking regarding particular activities required to achieve a desired goal. That's what planning means. You have to plan out whatever you want to achieve in this life. If you don't plan it out, you will never achieve any goals. So today we'll go to the book of Proverbs because this is the Bible principle that I'm using uh, from Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. So if you have your, your Bible, I want you to turn to Proverbs um, 6 verse 6 to, to 8. So Proverbs 6 verse 6, um, it tells us that go to the ends. Thou sluggard, consider your ways and be wise. Which have no captain, no overseer, a ruler. Verse 8 says, it provides her supplies in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. What that means? So God is saying um, to Solomon, Solomon is giving us this wisdom. Solomon is saying, stop being lazy. Stop complaining about why you have not achieved anything in your life. Stop making excuses why you cannot gather and to achieve something in your life. Stop making excuses. He said, if you want to be wise and achieve any goals, any success in life, he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go and study the ants. He said, go and study the ants. You slug at me. You lazy. You just sitting there. You don't want to do nothing in your life. You don't want to work on yourself. He said, this is what I want you to do. Follow the principle of the ants. Follow the success of the ants. How they plan to achieve success. So now this is how the ants achieve success. He said, the ants have no captain. The ants have no leader. The ants have no ruler. They are not waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. They are not waiting for somebody to motivate them because they know what they want to achieve in their life. So these are the principles of the ants, how they achieve success. This is how the ants achieve success, right? So now someone is saying the plan goals, the achieve goals of the ants is to have a harvest in the wintertime. So now, how can they, how can the ants have a harvest in the winter time, right? So the first goal, the first principle of the, the ants is 
is to estimate, number one, is to estimate how much food would they need in the winter time, right? So they need to estimate how much food, the cost of the food, how much they will need in the winter time, right? Because whatever you do not plan for, you cannot achieve. Whatever you do not plan for, you cannot get it. You cannot receive what you don't plan for. Whatever you don't plan for, do not expect to experience what you are not planning for. So now the ants, they realize in the winter time, it's cold, it's freezing. So they have to plan their food, right, in the summertime. So now it's the summertime, they start gathering up, looking for, searching for food, planning out the food to save up for the winter time. Glory to God. So now the ants gather their food, right? They gather their food in the summer. They gather their food. What they do, they, like I said, the first principle is the cost of estimation, right? So now they have to estimate how much food would they need in the winter time. So that's rule number one, estimation. Plenty out the budget, plenty out how much food they're going to need. So they estimate how much food. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two, they prioritize. What does it mean to prioritize? Prioritize means whatever you plan, you're focused on. Because whatever, you're, you, whatever you focus on is where you're going to spend your time. The great Solomon says that every season, there's a time and a purpose under the sun. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to gather, a time to scatter, right? So whatever you prioritize in your time on, that's how you'll be able to achieve your goals. Based on your goals, you will be able to prioritize your time. You see, today in our life, we do not prioritize our time. We spend our time on things that is not important in our life. So if you're not prioritizing your time, what you want to spend your time on to achieve certain goals and plan your life, you will not reach anywhere in your life. So this is what the, the, the ends does. The ends prioritize their time. They prioritize the summertime to gather all the food that they need for the winter time. So now, the, the third principle is they create a guidelines. What is a guidelines? Guideline is rules, laws, and regulation. So the plan is saying now, okay, our goal is to have a harvest in the winter time. So now we have to prioritize our time, how many days in the week, how many hours in the day, and we're going to work on our project to gather food for the winter time, right? So now they have little rules and regulation among themselves say, you know what, maybe from nine to five, just like you and I today, maybe they say from, eight, from 5 a.m. to 3, 3 p.m., we go to mobilize together, gather together in group, in unison, because they are not the stronger, they are the tiniest, but they are the wisest. So what they do, they gather themselves together. There is no ruler, there is no captain, but they all work together in one in unison for a specific goals, because their goal is to what have full harvest in the winter time, right? So what they do, they set up guidelines, rules, and regulation for themselves, discipline, right? Without discipline, there is no success. You need discipline. You need discipline to get you where you need to go in life. You need to be disciplined, to focus on that goal, to prioritize on that goal, to have a specific time in your life. He said, you know what? At the hour of 2 p.m., I'm going to take this time to work on myself. I'm going to work on a specific goal that I want to achieve right so they are, they are disciplined so they don't care whether it's snowing whether it's raining whether the sun is hot their goal is to what to achieve a harvest in the winter time because whatever you do not plan for do not expect to experience glory to god so now the ends are plenty for their life the ends are plenty for their future for this for the winter time the question i'm coming to you today what are you planning for? What are you planning in your life to achieve? What are you planning today? What are you planning? Because what you don't plan today, you will never achieve in your life. These are the principles 
that Solomon is saying unto us, the children of God, he said, I want you to go and study the ends. If you say, I want to become a lawyer, you first have to go and do a research. How can I become a lawyer? What is my goal to become a lawyer? What is the end goal, right? So the end goal now is to become a lawyer. So now I have to ask myself, what is the process? What do I need to do? What school do I have to go to to become a lawyer? What certificate that I need to become a lawyer? These are the process. So now, now I have to know how long does it take to become a lawyer? That is the one, the estimation of the expected goal, right? So now, I said, I want to become a lawyer. But I have no plans. I have not put nothing down. I have not strategized plans. I have not strategized activities that will lead me to become a lawyer. So how can I achieve that goal in life? So this is what God is saying unto us today. We said we want to achieve this. We said we want to have this in our life. We said we want to do this and we want to do that. But we don't set no goals. If you don't set goals, how can you achieve anything in your life? So these are the steps to achieve any goals in your life. For example, if I want to become, if I want my goal is to achieve $100,000 a year, what is, what is separating me from that $100,000? It's information, right? So now I said my goal is to what? Achieve $100,000 a year. So what am I going to do? I'm going to look, seek out information. The Bible says study to show yourself approved of God. That's principle one, to study. The Bible said my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge, right? So I need to study. I need to seek information to reach to that goal. Then I have to strategize plans to reach to that goal. That's the only thing separate me and 100,000 is because I don't have the information. I have not studied how to get there. So every information that you need in this world today is out there. So I'm going to go to a, you know, a, second, a second example to help us. We the children of God. The reason why the children of the world are wiser than us, it is because why? They know how to plan. Because Winston Churchill said, he who fails to plan is planning to fail. So if you don't plan your life in this world, you will never achieve anything. The only way you achieve any goals is by planning. It's by strategizing. Coming out with plans and activities that will reach you, that will get you to your desired goals. For example, I remember when I was working for the state, um, as an ACS worker, um, working in the juvenile center. And I understand that in order for me to pass the training, I remember that um, the Lord gave me a vision. And in order for me to be competent, to work as a youth development specialist in a secure detention, I have to gain weight. I have to become strong. So what did I do? The first thing I did, what was my desired goal? My desired goal is to become strong because I'll be dealing with kids who are more stronger, who are bigger, taller than me. So what did I have to do? My first goal, my first, my plan, my goal was to, to gain about 20 pounds. How did I get to that 20 pounds? What did I do was my plan? Okay, my goal is I need to gain 20 pounds of muscles. That was my goal my end goal right then i asked myself how can i get to that 20 pounds i said to myself rule number one i have to sign up for the gym so i signed up for cross gym i signed up for the gym then i asked myself how long do i need to reach to that goal do i need two months three months so i had expectation of myself. The Bible said that expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. David said, my expectation is on God. So whatever you are expecting, you have to plan for it. Glory to God. 
So what I did was, I said, how many hours do I need to spend in the gym to gain that 20 pounds of muscles? How many days do I need to go to the gym to gain that 20 pounds of muscles? Because my expected goal is to gain 20 pounds. Glory to God. So now I said to myself, how many days do I need to go to the gym? Okay, I need to go to the gym twice a day. Twice a day, five days in a row. So what I did, early in the morning before I start the job, before I started the training, I started going early in the morning and spent at least two to two or two to three hours at the gym. Right? So I spent two to three hours at the gym for five days weekly because my goal is to gain 20 pounds. So what did I do? Then I asked myself, what kind of food do I need to eat? What kind of nutrition diet that I need for my body? to gain that 20 pounds, okay? So I said to myself, I need to understand calories. What is calories? Calories is the essence of how um, that accumulate, that, that, you know, that tell us how many pounds, right? So the more calories that I intake, the more I gain weight. So now I was looking for healthy calories, right? So now I'm looking for healthy calories while I'm going to the gym twice a day, five days in a row, because my goal is to gain 20 pounds. Glory to God. So now, I was consistent, right? I was committed. I was consistent to that goal, right? Just like the ants. So since I was consistent and I was committed and persistent to that goal, I found myself gaining that 20 pounds that I wanted to gain for my desired goal before I started this step job to work in a secure detention. So my goal was to gain 20 pounds. But how can I gain that 20 pounds? I have to create, I have to create a plan of activities, my goal, to reach to that goal. So what God is saying to you and I today, he's saying, what is your plan for your life? What is your plan? What is your plan for your life today? We cry to God, we complain to God, but we have no plans that we can give God. To help us we have no plans we have no plans that we can say god this is my plan that i have i want you to help me i want you to guide me i want you to direct me for my life but you see let me give you an example god is the greatest planner known to man god wanted god wanted a bird to fly guess what he did everything that god desired to have he planted a seed. He planted a seed for everything that he desired to have in this world. Everything that he desired to have on earth, he planted a seed. You and I today was a seed in our father's seeing it. We were a seed. So the goal of God, the end goal was to become a human. So what in, in that seed there is a human? But in order for us to become a baby, we need to go through that process of planning. How that process works. A man and a woman gather together. They have intimacy. And a man releases his semen in, into that woman, into a fallopian tube, and begin and, and what her egg fertilizes the semen. Then we turn into a baby. We go through steps and stages. So the end goal of God, in that sea, there is a baby. But if that seed does not go through the process of planning, there will never be no baby. So this is why planning is so successful. So now I want you to listen to this. Everything that God desired, he has a seed. And in that seed, there is the outcome of his goal in that seed. Right? So now God, God wanted a bird to fly. Guess what he did? He planned, he planned flight into that bird. Because the end goal of the success of that bird is to fly. But how can that bird fly if there's nothing was planted into that bird? It's just you, you and I today. You see, the greatness of the sea is in the tree. But that tree cannot become that tree cannot become a tree until that sea go through that process of planting. What that means, that means if I have an apple seed through the planning or process, 
The end goal is to turn into a tree, apple tree. That is the end goal. But how can that, that apple tree, how can that seed become an apple tree? It has to go through a process. It has to go through planning. It has to go through preparations, right? So what does that mean? That means now the seed, I have a seed. Everyone has a seed. God put a seed inside of them, right? So now I have an apple seed, right? The first thing I have to do, I have to look at the proper environment to plant that seed, right? So I have to put that seed because my end goal is a tree. But if I never plant that seed, the potential of that seed is the tree, just like you and I today. God has a plan for your life. But if you don't plant that seed that he put inside of you, if you don't plant that seed which he deposited inside of you, you will never become what he calls you to do. Glory to God. So now, that seed, the apple seed, the potential of that seed is to become a tree. That tree will never, that seed will never become an apple tree until it goes through the process of planning, of preparation. How does the preparation work? First, it has to go to an environment, a right environment, right? It has to be planted. It has to be watered. Every day, consistently, no matter what the season, no matter the rain, no matter what the challenges, the difficulties, the struggle, no matter what the storm that will come, you have to continue to water that seed. Just like, the, just like the apple tree. So now when that tree is going through the process, going through the process, it is not good. It, that process is hard. That process is difficulty. That process is challenging. But at the end of the day, there is a goal. What is the goal? To become a tree. Glory to God. So now once that seed go through the process of going through the ground, you see that when you go through, when you have a plan for your life, when you have a set goal for your life, Sometimes you have to go through that darkness. You have to go through that darkness like the sea has to go in the ground. That darkness, nothing grow until it go through darkness. Nothing grow until it go through challenges in life. So that sea has to go through that darkness under the ground. It has to go through that process of isolation. You see, when you start out a goal, a plan, you have to go through darkness. You have to go through isolation. You will be by yourself in that plan. There will be trials and tribulations that will come to destroy that plan. But you have to be persistent. You have to be consistent to your plan, for your desired goal. You see today, you see the ends. Just as Solomon said, Solomon said the end, they have no ruler. The ends have no captain. But what do they do? They are very wise. What do they do? Their goal is to have a harvest in the winter time. What do they do? They start a plan in the whole summer. The whole summer they start to plan. Look, you and I today, when we see ants, what do we do try to do to that ants? We try to kill that ants. We try to step on that ants. It's like you and in our dreams today. People try to step on our dreams to kill our dreams. People try to step on our goals. People try to step on our ideas to kill the ideas. But guess what? That ends don't give up. That ends keep pushing. That ends keep moving forward. For the desired goal is to have a harvest in the winter time. I'm gonna give you to another example according to Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. This goal, this plan right here, is what happened to all of us today as a Christian. Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. It's talking about preparation. It's talking about the ten virgins. The ten virgins. Five were wise and five was foolish. They all wanted to go and see the bridegroom. But guess what? Five of them did not make it. Why did five of the, the bride, five of the virgins did not make it? Because five of them were foolish. Five of them did not prepare and plan. The Bible tells us that five of them, they took a lantern without oil. Then the five wise ones, they took a lantern with excess oil just in case if anything happened. So now, when they went to the, 
when they went to their destination, they were waiting for the bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ. Today we are waiting for our bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Are you preparing to meet Jesus? What are you doing in your life that you are preparing to meet Jesus? What are you preparing in your life to make it? What are you preparing in your life to get yourself on the right track? What are you preparing in your life today? You see, time wait for no man. But your preparation will get you to your destination of achievement of goal. What are you planning for your life today to meet Jesus? If he comes today, are you prepared? That's the question I'm asking. If he comes today, are you prepared? Just like the five foolish bridegroom. The five foolish bridegroom, they did not prepare to meet. The, the five foolish virgin, they did not prepare effectively. They took a lantern without oil, without excess oil. How can you light up a lantern without oil? This is what people do in their life today. They said they want to achieve certain things, but they do not effectively plan, strategize plan to achieve that success. So the foolish virgin, they took a lantern to go and meet the bridegroom, but they did not take no oil in the lantern. But how can the oil light up? You see, the fire represents your passion. The fire represents your commitment. The fire in the lantern represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The fire in the lantern, the oil represents the anointing. You see, there are a lot of people that know the word, but they don't have the fire. There are a lot of people that know the word, but they don't have the anointing. There are a lot of people that know the word, but they don't have the grace. Glory to God. Glory to God. So now, the foolish five virgins, they did not plan effectively. They took a lantern to meet the king, the bridegroom, without of oil. How can you light up a lantern without of oil? They did not plan effectively for their life to meet the bridegroom. And the other rest, because the foolish five represent the unrighteous, foolish virgin today represent some of us. Are we planning to meet Jesus? What preparation are we planning in our life to meet him? Then the wise, the wise virgin, they prepare, they plan, because they knew, they don't know how long will it take to meet the bridegroom. They say, okay, we don't know how long it's going to take, but let us plan effectively. Let us take oil excess oil just in case it's going to take longer for the king to come. So they take the oil with them. And the Bible says that they heard a voice, a loud voice of the bridegroom coming. But the Bible said before they heard the loud voice, the Bible said during the night time, the wise virgin, they dimmed the light. To save, to save energy, to save their life for light to come on in their life. Just in case when the brown groom come, they, they, they still have light. Well, if you take time, we are, they are still preparing to meet Jesus. Are you preparing to meet Jesus today? Are you complaining in your life today? Say, when will he come? Are you prepared to meet him? Are you preparing to meet him in your life? What are you planning in your life today? To meet Jesus Christ. What are you planning? That's the question. Just as the wise virgin, they say, you know what? We don't know when the bridegroom will come, but let us plan effectively to be able to meet him. They took excess oil with them in their life. They took excess oil with them. Just in case the oil that they take is finished. Wow, the foolish virgin. The unrighteous, foolish virgin today, which represents some of us today in this world. We are saying, let me live my life. Let me enjoy myself. Because time is, life is short. Let me enjoy myself. Let me do what I want to do. But we don't know when our, our time will be called. We don't know when our numbers will be called. We don't know. 
We said, let me enjoy myself. Let me live this life that I want to live. Let me go back and do everything that I need to do. I'm still young, but I can say unto you, the Lord called Jeremiah when he was young. The Lord said unto Jeremiah. Jeremiah said unto God, he said, I'm, I'm still a young man. God don't care about your age when he calls you. He don't care about your age. Age means nothing to God. He said, I call you when you was in your mother's womb. He said, I knew thee before you was even born. So some of us today, we are saying we are too young. Let us enjoy ourselves. Let us have the best life that we can. Let us go do this and do that. You know, then when I get older, then I will submit myself to God. But you don't know when your number will be called. You don't know when you're going to die. So prepare and plan to meet Christ. Just like the wise, the wise virgin, what did they do? They plan. They plan to meet Christ, which was the symbol of the bridegroom. They plan to meet the bridegroom because they didn't know when the bridegroom would come. So what did they do? They took a lantern with them. They took oil with them just in case if it take too long. So while they are waiting for him, the light will still be on. The question is, is your light on today? It is your light on today still waiting to meet Christ. It's your light on today in your life. Do you have excess oil that will keep it burning, that will keep your desire burning for Christ? Do you have that anointing? Do you have that passion? Do you have that praise and worship? Do you have that discipline that will still continue to keep your light on, even though it may tarry? Even though we are still waiting for Christ. Have you planned for him? Have you planned it for him? Whatever you don't plan for, you cannot experience. Whatever you don't plan for, you don't achieve. Don't be like the foolish wise. Don't be like the foolish virgin. Who took a lantern without a light? They took a lantern without a light. They were waiting for the king, the bridegroom, which is Jesus Christ. The foolish one, they did not plan effectively. Knowing that if you, if in order, when you go to your destination, you need a light if you're going to take a lantern with you. If it's going to get dark sometimes in your life. It's going to get dark. There will be challenges. There will be difficulties. But have you prepared yourself in the word, in the spirit of God, that when challenges and difficulties come your way, will you still hold on? Will you still prepare for him who is still you are waiting for? So when that challenge has come, are you going to be like the foolish virgin that said, I'm going through this. Why am I going through this? Oh, Lord, why am I going through this problem? Why am I going through this situation? Why am I going through this? I'm praying day and night for my problem will be solved but you have no fire. Then when problems come, you give up. You give up. You turn your back on him. Do you have that fire to still praise him? Do you still have that fire to worship him? Do you still have that fire to say, Jesus, despite what I go through, despite what I may face in my life, Lord, even if I may lose my life for you, Lord, I'm prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared to meet you. How can I prepare myself to meet you, Lord? These are the principles that the bridegroom does to meet Jesus. They stay themselves in the word. They fast and pray. They do good unto others. They acknowledge their sins when things go wrong. They don't have no proud spirit. They know when they are wrong, they admit their wrongs. They seek his face in seeking other people. They say, God, I'm waiting for you. Are you waiting for Jesus Christ? Are you, are you going to tell yourself, say, I'm too young. I need to enjoy my life. I need to go and party. I need to do everything that I need to do. So let me get old first before I, I, I prepare for Christ. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when your number will be called. You don't know where your time will be. You see, death does not discriminate. Death does not discriminate. He goes for old, he goes for young, he goes for white, black, Hispanic, anyone. He goes for the rich, he goes for the poor. He does not have a specific option. He just comes. 
So the question is today, are you the foolish virgin who is not planning your life? Are you the wise virgin who taking extra measure? Who is expect, who is counting, who is preparing to meet Jesus Christ? The Bible says that when they heard the noise, when they heard the noise, guess what it did? They heard the noise of the of the bridegroom. And guess what happened? The foolish one, guess what they said? They said unto the wise, can you lend us some of your oil? Let me say unto you, parents that is listening today, friends that is listening today, you cannot save your children from their own salvation. Your children have to seek their own salvation. You can save your children. You can only pray for them. You can only guide them, lead them for salvation. But you cannot save them. There's only one savior. They have the desire. They have to have the passion, have the will, the choice to see Christ. You can only pray for them. Just as the wise, the wise virgin said unto the foolish virgin, he said, we cannot give you some of our oil. You did not prepare to meet Christ. I prepare to meet him. They said, I cannot help you. I cannot help you. You have to plan and prepare for your own salvation. You have to prepare and plan for what you want to achieve in this world. The Bible says, and the foolish, the foolish virgin, because they have no oil, and they needed to, they needed that lantern to come, they needed that light to come, because the light was off, because they did not plan effectively to meet the bridegroom. The Bible said they went out to go buy oil for the light to come on. The Bible said when they came back, the bridegroom already came. And he shut the door on them. I'm talking to someone today. Wherever you are, do you know Jesus Christ? He's knocking at your door. Don't be like the foolish virgin. And wait until it's late. And the Bible said, call upon me when I'm near. So wherever you are today watching, I'm not perfect. I'm a filthy rat. I'm a sinner. That is standing before you. But I said unto you today, wherever you are, there is nothing too hard for God. Come as you are to meet Him, wherever you are in your life. He will meet you where you are. He does not discriminate. He is not looking for the perfect, He's looking for the imperfect. He's not looking for the righteous, He's looking for the unrighteous. So wherever you are, He said, if there be none in our sheep, if one go missing, he said, What did the shepherd go? He said, What did the shepherd go and seek for that sheep? As I'm standing here today, to you, wherever you are around the world, as you are watching me, today is the day. There is no tomorrow. It's now. Because you don't know when your number will be called. As you are, as you are listening to me today, there is no separation in the spirit. No matter where you are in the four corners of the earth, if you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I accept you into my heart. I know that I'm a sinner. I believe you died for me and you rose on the three days. I accept you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. As you said that prayer with me today, I want you I want you to reach out your hands to me today. Bow your hands with me wherever you are. It does not matter what you have done in your life. Today is the day to play. Play as the wise, the wise virgin. And don't be like the foolish virgin, like some of us, we have been in our life. I come here to you with grace. I come here for you with peace. As I reach my hands to you today, wherever you are around the world, I want you to repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy upon me. Forgive me all of my sin, my unknown and my known sins. Wherever I went short of your glory, have mercy upon me. I accept you, Lord Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died and rose up for my sin. Lord, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart. Guide me. And lead me and direct me. I want to say unto you today, 
you see Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. He's the greatest architect. What is the architecture? Architecture is the one that planned the blueprint. He has already created a blueprint. He has deposited everything that you need. He deposited inside of you. Everything a computer needs to function has already been programmed inside of it. Everything that God has planned in your life, your purpose, he has already programmed inside of you. But the problem is you have not met your manufacturer. You have not seek him. He says, seek here first the kingdom of God and all the things will be added unto you. What are you designed today in your life? Are you designed to go on trips, fancy trips? Are you designed to live in a mansion, live in a good house, live for good health? What are you designed today? Whatever you designed to achieve today, he says, seek here first the kingdom of God. You see, the Holy Spirit is the greatest architect. You see, what is the architecture? An architecture is a person who plans the blueprint out. After he has planned out the blueprint, after he has designed the blueprint of the building, guess what he does? He gives it to the contractor. He gives it to the constructor worker to carry out his vision, his plan. That's what you are today. The Holy Spirit is the architecture. He has already given out the blueprint for your life. But he's waiting for you to seek Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. So you can finish his blueprint as an architecture who he has played for your life. He wants you to be the contractor because he works with you. The Holy Spirit works with us to help us fulfill our destiny. He helps us fulfill our plan that God has planned for us. That's who the Holy Spirit is, the helper to help us. So he created, he created, he created the blueprint as an architecture. He created a blueprint for your life. Now he gave you the blueprint. He gave you life. He says, seek me. He said, once you seek me now, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to guide you, plan for your life. And he said in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I have a plan for your life to give you a expecting enemy, not of evil. He has a plan for your life. Everything that is created, God has a plan for it. But you have to follow those plans to get to where he wants you to go. He has a plan. Everything you design today, you have to go and seek him. Everything that you want, the husband that you want, the wife that you want, the cars that you want, every good thing that you want in this life, you have to go and seek him. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all the things will be added unto you. He has already designed the blueprint. He has given it to the contractor. He has given it to the construction worker. You are the construction worker to carry out that blueprint to fulfill your destiny. He has already did everything. The blueprint has already been written. It's in the Bible for you to follow that blueprint. Follow that blueprint where you are seeking. I'm a living example. I used to move from parties to parties. Running the street. I had no plan for my life. If you talk about party, every party, I used to be there. Anything you think about, I used to be there. The only thing I never did was, 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 was smoke. But I used to be in the street looking for parties, party 24-7, party dancing, going to house, house party, any kind of party you think about, I used to be there. I didn't know the plans for my life. I had my own plan. But God had a special plan for my life, what I was born, what I was called to do. The Bible said there are many plans of a man. But they all lead to destruction. The Bible said there's a way of a man, a plan of a man that leads to his own destruction. But the plans of God will always prevail. The plans of God is to give you a expecting enemy. A plan of God to give you success. Give you your dreams, your desire, what he put you on this earth to do. But it cannot happen until you seek him. He says, seek your first the kingdom of God. And all the things will be added unto you. What you want to be added into your life today? You have to first plan for it. You want to become a doctor? Plan for it. You want to be successful? Plan for it. You want to buy a house? Go and plan for it. Whatever you want to plan today. But I say it unto you that is listening. May God bless you. May God make his face shine upon you. May God be gracious upon you. We are in the six more. We got six more months left. What do you want to achieve today? Seek him first. Let him guide you, lead you. You want a house? Seek him. Ask him, Lord. 
What kind of house should I buy? Where should I move? Six days. You got six days more left in the year. We are in June. December will, still, will soon be here. What are you designed to achieve? What is your goal that you want to achieve? You cannot achieve success without a planning and goal. But tomorrow we'll begin to speak about goals. How to use 20% of your brain by using goals. I pray that God bless you. God keep you. May God face shine his face upon you. I pray that whoever that is listening to this video, watching this video, wherever you are around the world, there's no separation. I pray that God bless you to share, to share this video, to like this video, and share this video. So you can become a blessing. It may become a blessing not to you, but to someone who have a dream and plans and they want to carry out and they don't know where to start. But I say you can start from Jesus. You can start by reading that Bible. You can start by creating a blueprint and giving it to God just like David. He said, Lord, what should I do? Should I pursue? Should I overtake? The question is today, what is the plan for your life? What is the plan for your life? Be blessed.